An interesting internet phenomenon that has recently popped up is the iceberg tier list. Similar to the classic tier list, this image ranks things not in terms of personal taste but obscurity and weirdness. There are icebergs for music, games, and most notably conspiracy theories. These tiers are interesting because you can see one on a topic that you thought that you knew very well and realize you've barely even scraped the tip of the iceberg. I'm, uh, quite the fan of Garfield if you couldn't tell and, uh, I mean, if you couldn't tell, you're just not that good at picking up contest clues. The point is, I used to consider myself somewhat of a Garfield expert before I saw the iceberg and realized just how deep the rabbit hole was. Before we dive in, pun intended, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Gavin's Barbecue on Instagram and YouTube. He spent a huge amount of time explaining everything to me and contributed so heavily that this video literally wouldn't be possible without him, so please go show him some support. I'd also like to note that this video is heavily inspired by Blame It On Jorge's video, The Lost media iceberg. It's a fantastic video and this video is basically my take on his one so if you haven't seen it already definitely go watch his video. So now let's explore the Garfield media iceberg. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. Garfield and Friends was an animated cartoon adaption of Jim Davis's comic strip. It ran from 1988 to 1994 and had seven seasons which ran on CBS Saturday mornings in America. I'm sure that's all very nostalgic for you Americans, but my personal experience was the box sets which were heavily distributed to other countries. US Acres was a segment in Garfield and Friends. In a standard episode, there would be two Garfield segments and one US Acres segment in between. The show followed the lives of a bunch of farm animals, and despite sharing a similar laid-back pace and humor to Garfield, the show never really gained a huge amount of popularity. The Garfield Show was a 3D animated cartoon airing on Cartoon Network. After movies like Garfield Gets Real, Fun Fest, and Pet Force, the franchise had fully moved into its 3D era, and the show reflected this. It ran from 2009 to 2016 and had five seasons. Garfield Minus Garfield was an infamous fan-made comic strip made in 2008. In these comics, every character but John is removed, turning the comic into, quote, a journey deep into the mind of an isolated young everyman as he fights a losing battle against lonely and depression in a quiet American suburb. The comic was absolute genius, and even now, over 10 years later, the strips continue to circulate as memes online showing the enduring and timeless humor of Garfield minus Garfield. Garfield, His Nine Lives, is an extremely important piece of media in this iceberg as multiple other theories branch out from it. There are three versions of Nine Lives, the original comic book from 1984, the comic book remake in 2015, and the animated television special from 1988. This thing scared the hell out of me. It basically follows Garfield as he brutally dies multiple times before being reincarnated in various strange and frightening ways. This thing is dark, both the comic and the TV special, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it traumatized me. I would say it's one of the scariest and most bizarre pieces of Garfield media out there, but we haven't even touched the surface of the iceberg yet. Square Root of Minus Garfield is a website that posts parody comics. Similar to Garfield Minus Garfield, the site manipulates and alters the comics to give them new meaning. Sometimes it's as simple as changing the dialogue, while other times they add separate art, images, and effects to completely change the meaning of the comic. The 1989 Halloween arc, also known as Garfield Alone, was a bizarre comic strip published for Halloween. The comic featured an extremely dark and eerie style and shows Garfield waking up to find the house empty and abandoned. The following panels show Garfield coming to the realization that he no longer exists, with loneliness and the fear of being alone being a major theme. To wake up from this nightmare, Garfield has only one weapon, not love or friendship, but denial. This weirdly eerie strip is a real published Garfield comic and struck many people with how unsettling and out of place it was. The Garfield is dead theory leads on from the Garfield alone strip. It theorizes that due to the strip's dark, ominous tone and creepy ending, the comic actually depicts Garfield's dying dream where he denies the horror of his dying state and instead slips back into his old happy memories. An extremely dark theory, but hey, death has never been off the table for good old Jim John Davis, thanks for scarring me for life. Well, it turns out that this theory has been debunked by the man himself, who upon hearing the theory reportedly laughed for quite a long time and claimed that the strip was simply meant to be a one-off Halloween spook and was non-canonical. Hey, lucky for you, you're gonna live to see another day, buddy. 
This one simply deals with the fact that canonically John Arbuckle is a cartoonist. Though his career doesn't often come up in the comics, it's a little more established in Garfield and Friends where he is shown working multiple times. Diana's Piano is an extremely sad segment from the Nine Lives TV special. It follows Garfield on his sixth life where he is reincarnated as a cat called Diana who is gifted to a girl called Sarah. The short follows Sarah as she grows up, goes to college, gets engaged and even has a baby all while playing the piano for her beloved cat. The short is absolutely beautiful, animated in this flowing coloured pencil style and scored with gorgeous piano music throughout. Heathcliff, the newspaper comic character whose main shtick appears to be uh, wearing a helmet with the word ham on it is generally considered to be a cheap Garfield knockoff. After all, the cats share a similar tough persona love of food and look almost identical. But it turns out that Heathcliff actually came first, being published in 1973, a whole three years before Garfield. Despite this, Heathcliff is often called the, uh, <laughs> the copycat. <laughs> Garfield's scary scavenger hunt was a browser flash game released in my glorious birth year of 2002. In the game, you control Garfield as he explores a haunted mansion with the goal being to find as many baked goods as possible without maxing out Garfield's scare meter. Garfield's scary scavenger hunt walked so phasmophobia could run. Lyman was one of the main characters in the Garfield comics and was John's roommate. He first appeared in 1978 but disappeared from the comic in 1983. Lyman's original purpose was to be someone that John could talk to, though as Garfield gradually took over this role, Lyman was removed from the main cast. Fun fact, he's appeared 69 times in the comics. <laughs> Garfield Live was an obscure Garfield musical, first performed in January 2011 in Muncie, Indiana. And fun fact, that's Garfield's birthplace. There were four different versions of the show, three were just varying lengths, but the fourth was a Christmas show. Phew, I think we lost it. <laughs> you saw it, Odie. It's a giant monster lasagna. We need a plan, Odie. <coughs> The website GarfieldLive.com also offers costume rental, birthday shows, and performance for hire, though the booking button has long been defunct. Garfield's mother and grandfather appear in the 1983 TV special Garfield on the Town. When Garfield finds himself toughing it out in the streets, he finds out that his mother and grandfather are living as strays in an abandoned pasta factory. While his mother is supportive and loving, the special ends with Garfield's grandfather casting him out and disowning him. Dark. Arlene is a recurring character in the Garfield universe and generally serves as his love interest. Arlene is never shown with a home or an owner and it's revealed in the comic book Garfield's Judgment Day that she is in fact a stray. After Lyman's disappearance in 1983, fans would speculate about where he was. In the 1998 book 20 Years and Still Kicking, Jim Davis included a list of 10 explanations for Lyman's disappearance, including the line, don't look in John's basement. In the game, Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt, the basement is an explorable area and... Uh, yup, that's Lyman. Maybe Garfield minus Garfield was right about John's psyche the whole time. Nermal, generally considered the scrappy do of the Garfield franchise, is a recurring character in the comics. When Nermal first appeared, it was established that he was owned by John's parents, although he never appeared on their farm in any of the comics or TV specials. Later on, it was re-established that Nermal's owners occasionally leave him with John to be babysat. However, these owners are never named and their identities remain a mystery. The Garfield phone mystery was a bizarre phenomenon in which Garfield Tycho telephones would wash onto the shores of France for over 30 years. Thousands of phone parts were found over the span of three decades with no clue to their origin. Sounds like some James Sunderland ass shit, right? No. Well, in 2019, the mystery was solved. The source of the Garfs was found deep in a cave where a shipping container was found surrounded by dozens of scattered orange phone parts. The container had been swept into the cave during a storm and for 30 years, the tide had been washing the spilled contents out into the sea. While the phenomenon did produce some amazing imagery, it heavily contributed to ocean pollution in the area. For a long time, Garfield's exact weight was unknown to fans. While Garfield was depicted many times in both the comics and cartoons using and interacting with scales, his weight was never disclosed. That is, until a strip in 1986 where it was revealed that he weighed 27 pounds. I can only assume that his pasta-based diet contributed to this.
While Odie is known as Garfield's lovable but stupid sidekick, there may be more to him than meets the eye. Many fans have theorized that Odie is much smarter than he lets on. For example, in one comic from 1989 when John and Garfield leave the house, Odie is shown smoking a pipe and listening to Mozart. In another comic from 1984, Odie locks John and Garfield out of the car during a rainstorm and is shown smiling while listening to the radio and eating chips. Is Odie's dumb persona really just an act? Or, or maybe it's just Jim Davis trying to be funny, I never know with that guy. Dog sperm is a popular fan theory surrounding this Garfield strip from May 1990. After drinking what he believes is coffee at the vets, Liz says, quote, Congratulations, Mr. Arbuckle, you're going to give birth to a fine, healthy litter of puppies. Which appears to imply... Well, you've read the title of this one, figure it out. Despite Jim Davis claiming that the drink was actually a high-protein supplement for pregnant dogs, fans are suspicious that this may be a flimsy cover-up. I mean, John's face here really says it all. Tigger, also known as Primal Self, was a comic featured in the original Garfield His Nine Lives book. In Garfield's seventh life, he is reincarnated as a cat called Tigger. The comic has a realistic yet surreal art style using hatching to create a dark and foreboding atmosphere. The comic depicts Garfield as a house cat who is suddenly possessed by what is implied to be his natural wild instincts, causing him to attack and likely kill his elderly owner. The strip is incredibly dark, but not that out of place in the morbid Nine Lives collection. Lasagna Cat was a bizarre web series comprised of music videos, skits, and short films which parodied Garfield. The series, using dark and absurdist humor, was created by Fatal Farms and gained somewhat of a cult following. Most early episodes of the series are live-action remakes of the comics, but the episodes would become more strange as time went on, culminating in a five-hour-long video called Sex Survey Results, which contains many bizarre and disturbing elements. Despite the unsettling content, Lasagna Cat has been widely praised as both a criticism of Garfield and a homage to Jim Davis. Garfield, Caught in the Act, was a 1995 side-scrolling platformer made for the Sega Genesis. An alternate version of this game called Garfield The Lost Levels was released onto the paid Sega Channel service which included at least three never-before-seen levels. Garfield The Lost Levels has never resurfaced on the internet and due to the fact that the Genesis deletes save data when the console is turned off, it's unlikely that it will ever see the light of day again. Garfield's trademark hatred of Monday is usually considered nothing more than a relatable quip. I mean, who the hell likes Mondays? I'm with the cat on this one. However, many fans have developed theories to explain it. One heartwarming theory proposes that Garfield hates Mondays because it's when John returns to work, leaving Garfield lonely at home. However, John is a cartoonist and works from home. A more fitting theory proposes that Garfield hates Mondays because he grew up in a mum and pop restaurant called Mama Leone's. Mum and pop restaurants are usually closed on Mondays, meaning that Garfield would have to eat leftovers instead of the freshly baked pasta and lasagna that he was used to. Jim Davis has stated that Garfield's favorite food was nearly pizza because it's easier to draw than lasagna. And to think, without lasagna we wouldn't have Garfield's Guide to Lasagna, cooking nature's perfect food. Although to be fair, without pizza we wouldn't have the disaster that was Garfield Eats. Fans of Bill Murray have often wondered why on earth the A-list actor agreed to sign on to the widely hated live-action Garfield movies. It turns out that after skimming the script, Murray agreed to sign on because he thought the movie was written by Joel Cohen of the Cohen Brothers, who produced legendary films like Fargo, The Big Lebowski, and No Country for Old Men. It was actually written by Joel Cohen, who was the mastermind behind such classics as Daddy Daycare, Evan Almighty, and gnomes and trolls, apparently. After fully reading the script, Murray was reportedly appalled and questioned how Joel Cohen could have written such a thing, which is when he realized his blunder. However, at that point it was too late and his name will forever be connected to the disastrous movie and its sequel. Speaking of Bill Murray, there's actually a pretty interesting coincidence surrounding his Garfield voice acting role. The original voice actor for Garfield was Lorenzo Music, who sadly passed away in 2001. Music was also the voice of Peter Venkman in the series The Real Ghostbusters, the animated TV adaption of the famous movie where Bill Murray played the same character. This was purely by coincidence, but still, as Garfield would say, Nice touch. Garfield's Judgment Day was a cancelled movie-length TV special centering around a tornado destroying Garfield's hometown. The special was to be much darker in tone and would deal with more serious subject matter. Jim Davis even claimed that it would be his magnum opus. Our first full-length feature film will be called Garfield's Judgment Day. One of the songs from the movie is about how easy cats and dogs have it. 
The great Lou Rawls has been featured in all our television specials. Here he joins Desiree to record that song for the movie. The special was going to be produced by Disney themselves and the production was well underway until Disney cancelled it claiming that the special was much too dark and unsettling. Jim Davis tried to rewrite the script multiple times but Disney turned it down. There's an entire movie's worth of voice acting, storyboards, music and even 15 minutes of full animation out there that may never see the light of day because of Disney's cancellation. Bastard. A Week of Garfield, also known as Garfield no Ishukan, is an extremely rare Famicom game released only in Japan in the year 1989. The one thing that the game is known for? It's incredibly low quality. The game requires you to traverse multiple enemy infested levels searching for hidden keys. The game is made worse by the incredibly poor hit detection and unfair difficulty but is made so much better by the hilariously off model graphics. Midway through a jump and he transforms into your bald uncle. Depending on who you believe, the game was never shipped outside of Japan due to either a licensing issue or the issue of the game's poor quality. Yeah, well, I, I sure know which one I believe. Believe it or not, the comics were originally going to center around John Arbuckle, Tumblr's least favorite pet owner. Jim Davis originally wrote the comic to center around John with a wisecracking cat as his sidekick to deliver zingers. After showing it to a fellow cartoonist, he was convinced that the cat should be the focus of the comic and thus Scarfield was born. Spot was the name that Jim Davis originally planned to call Odie. However, after hearing that fellow cartoonist Mort Walker had a dog character called Spot in his comic strip, but Bona's Ark, <laughs> he decided to rename the dog Odie after a character from a car dealership commercial that he wrote. It's fair to say that Jim Davis could probably buy an entire country with the money he's earned from licensed merchandise alone. However, he has stated that he deeply regrets one piece of merchandise, this zombie Garfield shirt from 2016. Davis later stated in an interview that the design was gnarly and in retrospect did not give him a warm and fuzzy feeling. Davis reported that the shirt sold okay but is still considered a fairly rare piece. Before 1981, Garfield was always depicted walking on all fours, like you know, a cat. He only started walking on two feet after Charles Schulz, creator of Peanuts, advised Jim Davis to make Garfield's paws bigger. Davis confirmed in an interview with The Guardian that Charles Schulz drew the first stand in Garfield. Screaming with Binky was a short recurring sketch in Garfield and Friends. However, when the show came out on DVD, four of the Screaming with Binky segments were missing for unknown reasons. Two of these segments have been found and recovered, but the remaining two are incredibly hard to find with only a grainy screen grab as evidence of their existence. In both the original Nine Lives comic book and the TV special, Garfield's eighth life is depicted as his current one. In this life, he grows up in a pasta restaurant and is adopted by John Arbuckle before living out his days as a house cat alongside John and Odie. This life is clearly the one that we see in the comics and TV shows, so it's fair to assume that most mainstream Garfield contents takes place during his eighth life. While many creators see fan interpretations and parodies of their work as insults, Jim Davis has openly admitted to loving all the wacky fan creations that have come out for Garfield over the years. It turns out that he loved Garfield minus Garfield so much that he teamed up with the creator, Dan Walsh, to create an officially licensed Garfield minus Garfield book, including comics made by Davis himself. It is unknown who Garfield's real father is. While the TV special Garfield on the Town introduces us to his mother and grandfather, Garfield's father has never been shown or even mentioned in any of the comics or cartoons. The Lab Animal Remake is a comic from the Garfield His Nine Lives reboot. The story takes the original Lab Animal story and morphs it into something even scarier if you can believe that. Illustrated by Fraser Irving, it shows Garfield undergoing a biogenic mutation experiment before being transformed into… this. And yes, this is canonical, and yes, this is in a Garfield book marketed to children. Hello, yes I'd like to call the police. And I'd also like to order four big cow lasagnas. In the Nine Lives animated TV special, Garfield's third life is depicted as bizarrely whimsical and childlike, animated in a very surreal style. It follows Garfield and a girl called Chloe as they live and play in a wondrous garden. The story shares many parallels with the story of the Garden of Eden. The two live in harmony before having to resist the temptation of opening a crystal box as they believe that something bad may happen. Garfield also notes that this was his favorite life and that his body grew old but he never grew up. 
The three splitting timelines theory proposes that the Garfield series consists of three main timelines, all of which intersect at Garfield's eighth life before splitting again. The first timeline takes place in the original Nine Lives book, the second life takes place in the Nine Lives TV special, and the third most current timeline takes place in the Nine Lives reboot. All of these lives meet at the same point in Garfield's eighth life, which is where the comic and TV show takes place. Other timelines include the CGI timeline with movies like Garfield Gets Real, Pet Force, and Fun Fest, and the live action timeline timeline which includes both of the Bill Murray Garfield movies. Today I Watch You is an extremely creepy and unsettling comic posted on the Square Root of Minus Garfield website. It was posted on August the 28th in 2010 by someone called Diamond Dex. While this may seem like some sort of cursed, deep web, lost media creepypasta, it turns out the creator was simply playing around in Photoshop and wanted to share their work. Very unsettling, but overall just a fun bit of Garfield fan art. The Garfield has met God theory is actually canonical, believe it or not. At the end of the Nine Lives TV special, after dying for the final time, Garfield and Odie find themselves facing God in what appears to be some sort of purgatory. Garfield lies and says that he's only on his first life and claims that Odie is a cat, causing God to give them both all nine lives back. Leading on from this, the immortality theory proposes that nine lives depicts just one cycle of Garfield's nine lives, and since he was able to persuade God into letting him start his lives over again, he is actually an ageless immortal being, constantly resetting his nine lives in order to live forever. I think the takeaway from this video is that Garfield is not just a simple cartoon character. The cat has been criticised as cheesy, unfunny and annoying, but in my opinion there's much more to Garfield than meets the eye, from the rich tapestry of his history to his modern resurgence as a piece of ironic iconography. Garfield's universe and all of its unique timelines are filled with interesting and obscure tidbits, from ill-fated live shows to lost video games and everything in between. But what makes Garfield special is his fans. Garfield fans have transformed the character in new and amazing ways from r slash I'm sorry John to Garfield minus Garfield to lasagna cat. Not in a way that mocks or dismisses the original, but in a way that celebrates and enjoys it. Garfield's resurgence as a modern meme is a testament to the timeless quality of Jim Davis's creation, as well as the amazingly talented and creative fans that it's attracted. Maybe I'm just saying all this to justify all the merch I've brought over the years, but in my eyes Garfield is a great franchise made only greater by its fans. And who knows, the Garfield media iceberg could go even deeper than we think. Think. Only time will tell. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Um, I know this was a little different, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Once again, thank you so much to Gavin's Barbecue for all the help on this video. If you like Garfield or just good content in general, please check him out and go show him some support. With that said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!